what's going on guys you already know who it is your boy terabyte reacts here and i'm back with some more game of thrones reactions lore and this one has been on the list for a very long time and i finally got a chance to do it um it was requested a long time ago that i read and it's Rhaegar. is Rhaegar john's daddy okay is he the true e hero of game of thrones now we will jump into this i think this is by um what's his name again uh i can't remember dude's name um i think it's all shift x i think this one is from all shift x um but this is going to be really interesting you guys already know that i love john everything about his story is is pretty cool and to learn more about Rhaegar is awesome to know about him. From the little that we actually know about him, um, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Um, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, love makes you do crazy things, doesn't it? It, it really does. And I don't, I don't want to necessarily blame everything he did on love for Lyanna. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't know if I should blame all of that on love because he did spark everything. He sparked the rebellion. He, he, you know, I don't know about him being an hero, the hero to Game of Thrones. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, everything that came after he did what he did after he, re he ran away with Lyanna his his fault. I mean, don't get me wrong, Liana is part, is, is, is to take some of that blame too, because she went, you know, without telling her brothers or sisters what's going on, um, you know, she, she, in terms of the repercussions of what happened, she caused her, her dad to die, she caused her brother to die, um, and throughout all of that, I know that Rhaegar did come back to fight um, for House Targaryen, for his daddy, during the rebellion and stuff, and got killed by Robert. I know that that happened, but at that point, like I, it, it, you know, there's certain things, there's there certain storylines that that when you look at them, you're like, why did this happen? Did this really have to happen? You know, and in retrospect, you're like, no, it didn't really have to happen because he could have came back and said, listen, man, is it a problem? I think, I, in my opinion, it seems, it seems like, I mean, them being the Warden of the North, they were f quite fine with, with however things were going in the kingdom. Would they have forgiven if Rhaegar had come out and said, listen, man, I'm in love with your sis, right? If he had came out to Ned, like he met Ned on the battlefield and, you know, explained things or Robert or whatever. Robert would have never had it. So I'm, that's why I'm not saying Robert, but Ned. Would Ned have been like, you know what, man? You know, I probably tried to convince Robert that, listen, you lost her. You know, you lost her. But I guess it would have been, you know, because of honor and her already being promised to Robert and all of this. There's so many things to, to, to weave through to actually get to it. I guess that's why he probably just said, you know what, let me just fight. If I die, I die. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, I wedded her. I bedded her. You know what I'm saying? And... I don't know if at that point that he knew that she was pregnant, probably she me probably she did. I um maybe you guys can kind of explain to me the timeline that happened between them getting to um how long were they at the tower? Was this during the rebellion or after they've taken the throne? I'm not sure what happened. After they took the throne, um after they beat uh, and took King's Landing, is after that that Ned went to the tower, the Tower of Joy, right, and and kill um Arthur Dane and whatever this how that scene, right, um, 
I don't. I, I think was it during or after? You know, because that rebellion must have lasted a long ass time. Because she was, she was basically ready to have the baby at that point. So if if so much months have passed, that rebellion must have been going on for at least for a good while. Because Rhaegar died during the rebellion. It must have been going on for a while. So let's jump into this. Hear what I think this is our chef. Exit video if I think it is because I, I think that's his logo right there at the end. Um, so let's check this out, see what this is, and then we comment after. Okay, let's go. Da -da -dee, shows. Boom. Game of Thrones season seven finally confirmed one of the biggest secrets in the series the father of Jon Snow is Rhaegar Targaryen. Rhaegar died some 15 years before the main story, but he's an important and mysterious character connected to prophecy and political plots, with complex relationships with Lyanna Stark and Elia Martell. Rhaegar's actions shape the course of the story, with the fall of House Targaryen in Robert's Rebellion and the birth of Jon Snow, to the fate of Westeros in its fight against darkness. So let's work out who Rhaegar was and what he means for the future of Thrones. Before Tommen and Joffrey and Robert, the King of Westeros was Aerys Targaryen. Prince Rhaegar was Aerys' son and heir, and he was the brother of Daenerys and Viserys. Rhaegar was married to Elia Martell, the sister of Oberyn and Doran, and they had two young children, Rhaenys and Aegon. But one day, at a tournament at Harrenhal, Rhaegar passed over his wife Elia and crowned Lyanna Stark, the sister of Ned Stark, as Rhaegar's queen of love and beauty, when Lyanna was promised to marry Robert Baratheon. So the Baratheons, Starks, and Martells were mad about this, and the next year things got worse when Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna, and Robert started a war to get her back. King Aerys was killed by Jaime Lannister. Daenerys and Viserys fled east. Elia, Rhaenys, and Aegon were killed by the mountain and Armory Lodge. Lyanna died giving birth to Jon Snow. And Rhaegar was killed in battle by Robert. The Targaryen dynasty, who had ruled Westeros for hundreds of years, was over. Robert Baratheon became the new king. Fifteen years later, the first book begins, and it's a mystery exactly what happened with Rhaegar and Lyanna. King Robert says that Rhaegar abducted and raped Lyanna, but in Season 7 we learn that that's a lie, and that Rhaegar and Lyanna were in love. There's this whole thing in the books hinting that Lyanna rode in the Harrenhal tournament in disguise as a mystery knight, and Rhaegar was sent to go find her, which was probably how they met. So they fell in love, secretly got married, and ran away to this tower in Dawn to have sex all day until Rhaegar was forced to the war with Robert, where he died with Lyanna's name on his lips while Lyanna died in childbirth. It's a tragic love story, but it's also something more complicated. Because Rhaegar risked everything with Lyanna. He not only left his wife and children, he started a war that destroyed his family and his kingdom and his life. And the reasons behind this go deep into politics and prophecy and the fate of Westeros. When Rhaegar took Lyanna, he knew he was risking conflict. Like, we're told in the show that the war was built on this lie that Rhaegar kidnapped Lyanna. But even if people knew the truth that Lyanna loved Rhaegar, they'd still be mad. Because this was not a society that let women choose who they could love. Lyanna was a political tool that the Baratheons and Starks were using to build a marriage alliance. By taking Lyanna, Rhaegar ruined those plans. He also insulted Dawn by rejecting his wife Elia. So Rhaegar had pissed off three of the most powerful families in the realm, which is never a good idea, but it was especially dangerous at that time. The political situation was super delicate, because the king, Aerys Targaryen, was insane. By the time of the tourney at Harrenhal, it was well known that Aerys was mad. He was violent and paranoid, obsessed with fire, burning alive people he thought were his enemies. He was a terrible king, and lots of powerful people wanted him gone. Tywin Lannister had beef with Aerys and said he'd prefer Rhaegar as king. It's hinted that the Baratheons, Starks, Arryns, and Tullys were forming an alliance against Aerys. Marrying Lyanna was part of that. And Rhaegar himself was apparently plotting against his father. 
We're told that the whole tourney of Harrenhal began as a plot so Rhaegar could conspire with the Great Houses to force his dad into retirement. So Rhaegar was playing the political game. He knew how dangerous things were, and he was carefully scheming to work with the Houses to peacefully replace the Mad King. Until he suddenly threw that all away by publicly crowning Lyanna, insulting the very families who could have been allies against Ares. Then by running off with Lyanna, he set off the chain of events causing war. The Starks came angry to King's Landing, the Mad King killed those Starks and demanded the heads of Robert and Ned. That was when the war began, and it didn't seem to have much to do with the lie of an abduction. It was caused by the tension between King Ares and the Great Houses, which Rhaegar not only failed to fix, but made much worse by taking Lyanna. Why did Rhaegar take such a terrible risk at such a dangerous time? To understand why, we need to understand Rhaegar from the very beginning. We're told that Rhaegar was good at everything that he did. He was smart and a great warrior, he played the harp, he was beautiful, he was able, determined, deliberate, dutiful, and single-minded. Jorah calls Rhaegar the last dragon, and says he fought valiantly, nobly, and honourably before he died. Cersei, as a child, had a big crush on Rhaegar, and hoped to marry him. John Connington also loves Rhaegar, his silver prince, and Rhaegar was popular with the common people, who cheered him at tournaments. So, on the surface, Rhaegar seems like a golden boy who everyone loved, but Barristan says that no one truly knew Rhaegar. He had a private, secretive side, a melancholy, and a sense of doom, which was related to Rhaegar's birth at Summerhall. Summerhall was a Targaryen palace in the south. Rhaegar's great-grandfather, King Aegon V, brought his family there to celebrate the impending birth of Rhaegar, but Aegon also apparently tried to perform a fiery magic ritual to hatch some dragon eggs, and the fire got out of control and killed King Aegon and much of his family. It was during this tragedy at Summerhall, amongst the flames, that Rhaella Targaryen gave birth to Rhaegar. He was born in grief, and that shadow hung over him all his days. But it wasn't just grief that haunted Rhaegar, it was destiny. The Targaryens have always been guided by visions and prophecy. The reason they survived the doom and came to Westeros in the first place was because of the vision of Rhaegar's ancestor, Daenys the Dreamer. We see Daeron and Daemon Blackfire having prophetic dreams in Dunk and Egg, and prophecy is the reason why Rhaegar was born. His parents, Ares and Rhaella, got married because a witch said that the prince that was promised would be born of their line. The prince that was promised, or Azor Ahai, is a hero prophesied to be reborn and save the world from darkness, which seems to mean they'll fight the White Walkers. The prophecy is vague and complex, and people interpret it in different ways. Melisandre, for instance, thinks Stannis Baratheon is Azor Ahai, which doesn't work out, while others think Daenerys is the hero. Rhaegar was also into this prophecy, and it guided him from a very young age. As a boy, Rhaegar wasn't interested in playing with other kids, he just wanted to read books. Until one day, Rhaegar read about Azor Ahai, and came to believe that he was the prophesied hero. So young Rhaegar went to the Master at Arms and said he needed a sword. It seems I must be a warrior, he said. He talked about this in letters with his great-granduncle Maester Aemon. Aemon agreed that Rhaegar was Azor Ahai, because according to prophecy, Azor Ahai will be reborn amidst smoke and salt. They thought the smoke was from the fire that burned Summerhall when Rhaegar was born, and the salt was from the tears that were shed there. So Rhaegar was convinced that he was Azor Ahai, and since Azor Ahai is described as a warrior of fire who will lead the fight against the dark, Rhaegar trained and became a great fighter. From a young age, Rhaegar was willing to shape his life around fulfilling the prophecy of Azor Ahai. But his beliefs about that prophecy later changed, Amon says Rhaegar came to believe that Azor Ahai was not Rhaegar, but Rhaegar's son, Aegon, the baby he had with Elia. Because the prophecy says that Azor Ahai will be born beneath a bleeding star, and Rhaegar and Amon thought that this star was a comet that was seen the night Aegon was conceived. This connects to a vision that Daenerys has in Book 2. She sees her brother Rhaegar and his wife Elia with their baby Aegon. Rhaegar says Aegon is the prince that was promised, and there must be one more, the dragon has three heads. 
It's not clear how the heads of the dragon relate to the prophecy of Azor Ahai, but the heads do connect to the symbolism of Rhaegar's family, the Targaryens, because their banner shows a dragon with three heads, which represents the three siblings who led the house 300 years ago, Aegon, Rhaenys, and Visenya. As Daenerys points out, these names connect to the names of Rhaegar's children, Aegon and Rhaenys. So when Rhaegar says there must be one more, it sounds like Rhaegar wants a third child called Visenya to complete the set of the dragon with three heads. But there was a problem, because Rhaegar's wife Elia was always frail and sickly, and after giving birth to Aegon, she couldn't bear any more children. So if Rhaegar believed there must be one more, he'd need another woman to produce his third child. And that is where Lyanna Stark comes in. It seems likely that part of the reason why Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna and fathered Jon Snow was that he wanted a third child to fit the three heads of the dragon. If he was planning for a daughter called Visenya to fit Aegon's sisters, that didn't work out, but he might have changed his mind about Aegon and decided that this third child, Jon, would be Azor Ahai. Because Rhaegar says that Azor Ahai is connected to something called the Song of Ice and Fire, which happens to be the title of the book series. Lyanna Stark of Winterfell is connected to ice, and Rhaegar of the Targaryen Dragon Lords is connected to fire. So a child of Lyanna and Rhaegar would be a song or a son of ice and fire. There are many hints in the books that Jon may be Azor Ahai. Melisandre prays for a glimpse of Azor Ahai, and her god shows her Jon. There's smoke and salt and a bloody star on the scene where Jon dies, and Ned promised to protect Jon, making Jon a prince that was literally promised. So Jon, not Aegon or Rhaegar, may be the true hero. It might have been Lyanna who realised this in the end. Maybe she named Jon Aegon in the show. What better name for the prince that was promised? So it seems that in the end, Rhaegar achieved his goal. His actions with Lyanna led to the birth of Jon, who may be the hero who'll save the world. But does that really justify Rhaegar's actions? Couldn't he find a way to father Jon without abandoning his family and causing a war that killed thousands? How could he be certain that taking Lyanna was the only way? Vague prophecy seems like a convenient excuse for Rhaegar to do things that he probably wanted to do anyway, like ignoring difficult political realities, running away from his problems, and shacking up with a teenager. Because remember, Lyanna was just 15 in the books, while Rhaegar was a 20-something-year-old prince. You can imagine his pitch to her, like, hey, I'm married and you're (laughs) engaged, but if we don't bang, the world will literally end. And did I mention I play the harp? And he takes her away to this tower he calls the Tower of Joy. (laughs) No! (laughs) Oh my god! Oh, that pickup line, though. <laughs> and did I mention I played a harp? <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my god, my mouth is running water. <laughs> that was hilarious. Let me pull this back a bit here, man. That that was too much. Oh. The end. And did I mention I play the harp? And he takes her away to this tower he calls the Tower of Joy, and they sit around making prophecy babies for like a year. <laughs> Meanwhile, the world is burning. Are these really the actions of a hero trying to save the world? Or was Rhaegar just a selfish idiot who killed thousands because he was thinking with his dick? There is one theory that ties things together in a way that could justify all of Rhaegar's actions, including the war and the deaths. Because part of the prophecy of Azor Ahai is that the hero will have a burning sword called Lightbringer. In Book 2, we're told a story of how the original sword was forged. Apparently, Azor Ahai tried three times. The first sword broke when he tempered it in water. The second sword broke when he tempered it by stabbing the heart of a lion but the third sword he tempered by stabbing the heart of his beloved wife. She cried with anguish and ecstasy and died, but her strength went into the steel, and that is how the true Lightbringer was forged and the world was saved. Some readers have noticed that this story kind of mirrors the story of Rhaegar. Like Azor Ahai, he tried three times to fulfil prophecy. 
First, he believed that he himself was Azor Ahai, but he ended up dying in the waters of the River Trident. Second, Rhaegar believed that his son Aegon would be Azor Ahai, but Aegon was killed in the war by the men of the Lion of Lannister, Tywin. The third and final time, Rhaegar made a child with his beloved wife Lyanna. He plunged his sword into her, conceiving John, and she died in childbirth. So the first sword broke in water is Rhaegar, the second sword broke with a lion is Aegon, and the third sword, the true Lightbringer, forged with the death of a beloved wife, is Jon Snow, the sword in the darkness, the light that brings the dawn. So while Jon is the weapon who'll beat the White Walkers, the actual hero Azor Ahai is Rhaegar, dead years before the story even starts. This theory suggests that each of these deaths, everything that happened, was necessary, predestined, to save the world. Lyanna needed to die in childbirth, Aegon needed to die in the war, and Rhaegar needed to die at the Trident. Maybe he knew. Maybe Rhaegar saw this stuff in dreams like his Targaryen ancestors did, and part of him knew that his fate was to die and cause the deaths of everyone he loved. And that's why he could never be happy, never be known or fully love or explain himself to anyone. That was his melancholy, his sense of doom. Maybe his is the song of ice and fire. And from the beginning, he knew how it ends. That's one theory, anyway. There's still lots that we don't know about Rhaegar's goals, the politics, prophecy, heads of the dragon, and about Lyanna and Elia. Like, how did Elia feel about her husband running off with another woman? Was she in on the prophecy stuff? And how much did Lyanna know? Between Lyanna and Elia and Rhaegar's mother, Rhaella, there are a lot of women in this story whose only role is to be pretty, give birth, then die. We know almost nothing about them, so it'd be nice to learn some more about their stories. What is clear is that Rhaegar and his legacy are tied to the fate of Westeros, and we'll keep seeing his influence until the end. Old Shift X now has a website at oldshiftx.tv. We made it with our sponsor, Squarespace, which is an amazingly quick and easy way to make a beautiful website. There's no mucking around. All right. So that was Alt Shift X again, giving us these awesome theories, man. Love his videos, of course. Um, but he explained a lot. He explained a lot. So what I'm going to do with this video, because there's much to discuss of course, so what I'm going to do is, guys, when you watch this video, I like to answer or I like to give thoughts um, after I hear what you guys have to say. Um, I said what I had to say at the beginning of this video of what I think Rhaegar means to the story. And <clears throat> Archifex actually touched on a little bit of that way. I was like, you know, love makes you do crazy things. And... I didn't go as in depth as he did, but you know, um, it could have been just that. It could have been just that he fell in love, didn't know what the hell to do, and decided, hey man, let's just run off. Because I mean, they went all the way to freaking Dorne to live for here. Me- meanwhile, this war was going on. I mean, you know. So that that's just nuts. I mean, the only thing that I can think of that would make somebody do something crazy like that is love. Love makes you do some shit like that and don't give a shit about anything else. I'm telling you, it will do that. It will make you forget about everybody. And it was like, screw all y'all. I'm about my business. I love this girl. I'm going wherever y'all not going to stop me. Or whatever, I'll deal with whatever it is. I will deal with that shit later. Okay, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section, of course, of what you think. If you believe that the theory is true um, of how he went about hearing about the prophecy, um, going about to do the thing. Because the thing, the thing about prophecy that a lot of people don't understand, and that's why I don't agree with that, with um, with that, that part of the theory, I don't believe that that's how it happened. You get what I'm saying? Um, that first part that he was explaining, I don't agree with that. Knowing about a prophecy and doing everything in your power to make that prophecy come true does not make it a true prophecy. 
when somebody prophesies something, no matter what you do, that prophecy has to come true. You get what I'm saying? That that prophetic word or whatever it is that's being prophesied, um, it meaning that somebody saw something in the future that's supposed to happen. So if you know about a prophecy, somebody said to you, like, in the future, this is going to happen. Nothing you do is just like what happened with Cersei. It was prophesied to her that you're going to have children, three of them, and they're all going to die. She tried to prevent that so much and it still happened. That is what true prophecy is. Okay. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, you cannot prevent that prophecy from coming through. That is true prophecy okay so that the whole the whole meaning of prophecy is is just seeing the future it is not you know we have a lot of theory a lot of things out there right now that you know this is not a comic book where you can oh, oh you can do things to influence um how your future will turn out yes you can but if there is a prophecy and you know about it you can do, you can try to do things to make that, that prophecy come true. If it is in a positive arena, you can do things to make that prophecy come true. You're going to be like, see, I'm here. No, then it just wouldn't be true prophecy. That simply means you work your ass off to get somewhere. And then you can't just look at it. You can't look at it and be like, oh, that was prophecy. No, <laughs> prophecy will hit you in the ass just out of the blue that's what that's how prophecy is you know what i'm saying just it's just out of the blue somebody told you something a long time a long time ago and you were just minding your own business and then all of a sudden this opportunity just presents itself and you're like damn i remember when so and so said that to me 10 years ago i was telling me oh this shit is going to happen you know what i'm saying unexpected you understand? That's what I believe true prophecy is. If you believe it's something else, you can always put it in the comment section. That's what I believe it is. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. As always, got spit all over my damn beard. Anyways, leave a like on this video. Let me know what you think about this theory. Um, if you think that he w he was actually Azura High or not. If you think John is or not. What do you think? Um, and that's what I was saying earlier when I was saying that I need to know the point of view from Liana and all these women that are involved in this story. How did his wife Elia feel? It's the same thing that all effects is saying. Like, we have no idea what these women were feeling like. Did she know? You know what I'm saying? Like, did she know that she, she had to know that she was going to that she was going to run away? You get what I'm saying? So. I'm just letting you guys know this. Just let me know what you guys think. I'm eager to know what you guys think, though. So let me know in the comment section. And, of course, if it's the first time watching one of my videos, of course, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. And also, this is your boy, Terabyte Reacts. Peace. Mm.